All right, so here I am. I've got my spline set up still with the noise. I did not save the splines themselves, but I can make them from this object. I'm going to keep the noise modifier there. So I have my original object, and then I have um, at least one modified version. I'm going to make a duplicate here, and I'm going to move forward with this one. The reason why I want to keep this copy, uh, just so that when I add the noise, this is just a copy of I can change the seed. And that'll give me a different variation. And from that, I can create multiple copies and multiple variations of my thatching and create a trim sheet of sorts. And that allowed me to have a lot more variation in a very short uh, time. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of play around with the amount of stuff uh, of noise and in the X, Y, and Z variations. And just kind of play around with the variations to get some uh, cool patching shapes. So I'll just move through these real quick. And I'll just go ahead and make that. I'll copy that down to enable poly. Go back to this one. Hold shift to make a copy. And I'm going to probably make two or three layers. And then I'm going to flatten it down using the scale tool just to make it um, just a little bit. Because <clears throat> that'll help me get um, shrink up the distance here a little bit and in terms of the Y axis and it'll look a little bit more effective on the trim sheet when I make my normal map in substance. So let's go ahead and change this one. I don't want to kind of maybe shift stuff over. Um, now the thatching I'm style I'm going to use, I won't be able to go to the, I'm not going to go into all this detail, but I want to have kind of like this grouping kind of in, insinuated when it comes off of this and I want to have it get a little bit crazier as it goes out but right off the bat I'm also going to try to keep it clean and controlled um, the first version that I made I had some clumping inside uh, certain areas and so there was some striping in the tiling and it just was it was obvious and it was driving me crazy so that led me to head this direction of actually making different variations so let's go ahead and start making the group so this point I'm actually going to go ahead and take these and make a new layer when it opens up cool so let's grab let's get out of this grab all of those let's create a new layer I'm going to call this thatch build and this will have all the source um, files that I have like the basically like a source layer it's like I would do in Photoshop. I'm going to make a copy of these. I'm going to hit Control V to make duplicate. I'm going to make just a straight copy. And I'm going to hide these bad boys and work with these. I'm going to convert these all to a little poly. And I'm going to uh, get them, they're all white. I'm going to make them blue since now I'm working in 3D. And then I can see this. Let's hide the plane. We'll just hide that layer. All right, so here's my beginning thatching concepts. And when we add more layers, it'll look a little bit cleaner and a little bit more fun. I'm going to be doing layers in different areas. Uh, what I want to do is create trim sheets. So if I actually hide this back up, like I was saying, trim sheets. So what I'll do, I'm going to take this line, and I'm going to attach. Let's see, can I touch here and attach here. All right, so there's my basic shape. And what I want to do with the next up here is that I'll change those uh, noise seeds and make a new variation and slide it over. And I'll just be able to stack them up in <clears throat> succession as planar objects, as billboards, when I actually make the thatch roof. Um, this will be you know, a low poly uh, example. But in keeping the original shapes here, and putting those in an image map and then bring a 3D, I may be able to actually match the 3D to the 2D and kind of have some nice variations off of that. So that it'll look more like a three dimensional thatch roof when the player is close to the proximity of his eye height. Um, and then it can gradually disappear and become just a planar object as it gets away from the player. Um, just, we'll play with that. We'll see what happens. Um, I've already made a map for this. I don't think it's in here, but what I did for my thatching is just hay essentially and it's dried and that just takes values from we'll use a uh, standard uh, it takes values just that are from like a 
a yellowish brown to kind of a pale brownish yellow. It doesn't have a whole lot of variation, but the variation that it has looks really good. So I'm gonna use a gradient ramp for that. I'll go ahead and put this into the diffuse. Um, I'll probably just do a quick, it'll be something that I'll um, work on over time. But let's go ahead and get this in that direction. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. So double click and we'll show it and we'll apply it to there. Um, and so what we want to do now is just go ahead and just put a basic UV map on it. I don't care about unwrapping it. That's not necessary for this. This is the high poly. What we want to do is just have the UV map. Now um, I want to show a different way. One way we can definitely reorientate, reorientate the direction of the color right now is going on the x-axis. If I go into the gizmo and rotate this 90 degrees, I can get it going into the y-axis uh, or the z-axis for this particular setup. Um, or Z from every other software, it's Y here, max. But basically, I can have it go up and down. The other way I can do that, if I go back into my material editor, and this is how I'll do it in here so I don't have to worry about map. Let the map just be default. I can change it here. Uh, double click on the texture, and then where it says angle, we're going to change the W to 90, not 990, just 90. Um, and then I'll turn 90 degrees clockwise. Uh, based on the actual up and down of the camera angle. Uh, this is a 2D texture, so the W is referring to basically the camera. Um, so that's the same big, same thing as it changing the, the uh, UV coordinates here, but it actually just does it in the map, so I can leave the UV coordinates by themselves. So at this point, I'll collapse that back down, and now we can go into the color scheme. If we go off of the actual color scheme that I have here, I got a grayish red to a more of a richer red with some burnt umbers all the way through and some highlights of different lighter values and lesser saturations. So if we go off of that, let's just keep it simple for right now. And we'll go and double click on that color here. And we'll go ahead and get it basic. That I want to go ahead and grab this thing. I'm going to drag it up. I can grab it, grab it out, and then I can go to this one. And we'll go kind of more of a yellowish pale. I definitely want more saturation, a little lighter, and maybe even some more yellow. Green. There we go, cool. Um, and it's going over the entire object as a global thing. Um, independently they look pretty good but if I add some noise to this map here it's going to give me some more interesting variations um, and what I've also done is kind of just click in the color create a new flag and then I can drag a new flag over here and a new flag over here to kind of create some variation um, and then let's take that one off with the screen so small the pixel so small it's hard to grab it accurately let's Reduce my mouse as slow as it can go. There we go. Oh, and we'll take it off of that. And we'll add some lighter in here. That's better. Yeah, that's more effective. Okay, so what I want to do is get into the noise, turn that on, and we'll just add it on. And we'll start seeing some of the pattern here get wavy. We have to go. There it goes. Now you can see where the tiling is happening, and it kind of pops up from what's over happening over here. What's happening down here? If that becomes a nuisance, the easiest way to do that, fix that, is to hit copy, and then go over here and right-click on this first and second one and hit paste. And now it'll just be a pattern that just kind of follows along um, and tiles up and down pretty cleanly. So the other way we can do after we add some noise, I'm going to add uh, some levels. And so now we're getting some up and down streaks and stripes, which will get some variations off of this. And we'll use this texture for the entire rest of these things um, as a color map. And I can export the color map as a when I render out the object or render out a color map. Right now I'm just using it as a base to kind of give me some visual uh, idea of what I'm getting into. So that'll handle the color idea for the time being. And what I want to do now is start kind of putting some bunches together. This is the part that I was looking forward to doing here in a little bit uh, recently. 
whatever. This is the part that I was looking forward to doing. So let's go ahead and grab, we're gonna start kind of throwing some bunches together. So I'm gonna grab some of these. Uh, let's grab them by the element. Let's go faster mouse. It's a little too fast for the mouse. I really just don't like razors. Not for this stuff, but if you want to try 3D CAD mouse for sure. All right, so what I've got here, kind of throw this in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, tighten that up. Probably just throw that in there like that. I kind of like what's happening here. I want to make sure that I get some gaps, but I want to make some things not too clumped together. It's like making pasta. You just don't want too much pasta clumped together. You want to get it to spread out. It's much better. It takes the sauce better. You want to make good sauce. All right, so let's go in here. We can rotate some pieces. Um, if I'm going to follow the thatching that I have here, it's a little bit more of a 3D thatch. Um, but when it's all said and done, sometimes it gets compressed and cut into it, or a more modern technique. So I'll cram a bunch into it, and then we'll clean it up. And so it looks a lot more of a thicker size roof, but I'm going to kind of, I like this look, so that's kind of where I'm going to head. So let's start off with that. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab some vertices. Let's test this idea out. Well, what I'm going to do is test these ideas out. Well, let's go ahead and break this off. Thatch group of one, not eight one. Oop. Got that one. All right, so what I'm going to do now, go to vertex. We'll actually let's get out of here. Set a pivot, set an object. All right, so what I'm going to do here is test this out. And if this works, then I'll just do it off the video and I'll make the rest the same way. But I'm going to grab these vertices here. I'll just go ahead and grab these right here. I'm going to go to scale and I'm going to go into soft selection and crank it up. Cool. All right, so we're going to scale in the Y and the Z axis. Yeah, cool. I may scale a little bit more in the Z. Cool. All right, so what I want to do now is think about how to make this into a simple 3D object. And I've got a pretty good, pretty strong idea. And what I may end up doing is actually using this as the mapping object and this is the result but we'll see what happens uh, the next thing I'll do is probably add a string around this and I'll just do that with um, a new thread actually I'll just do a circle Boop. Thickness to do it. And we'll just scale that down. Um, it's going to have some overlap, but I'm not too worried about that. I can go in there and kind of change things and cram things in there as a spline. Easy peasy. We'll apply that. Make sure we turn on generate map coordinates. And uh, let's add an edit little spline. So that's the idea. Let's see, I think we're getting close to my time frame again. So that's one thing. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get off camera and I'm going to test out some other theories and then I'll come back and show you guys.